I'm Molly Kanyoko, and I'm an assistant professor and extension specialist in agricultural water management. And I'm Landon Baumgartner, Southwest Regional Outreach Specialist for the UW Extension Nutrient and Pest Management Program. Now, Malika, we've had a, a lot of runoff happening on fields of all topographies and all crop types this year. Comes with the territory when you have a wet spring. We do, we do a lot of work in field to kind of limit those you know, runoff, that runoff potential. But sometimes we have to focus on the edge of field practices as well. Those are gaining more popularity as we see more and more data come out saying that those are an integral part of our conservation goals, you know, as a state in Wisconsin. One of those being those edge of field practices like buffer strips and riparian corridors. Can you talk to us a little bit more about why those are becoming such an integral part in landscape planning on a farm? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are a lucky enough person to, you know, have a farm where you are bordering either a stream or a drainage ditch or a lake or any sort of a water body, um, then this bumper crops episode is for you <laughs> in that you might want to consider putting in a buffer strip or sometimes you'll hear them called filter strips as well. And this is basically, you know, not to use the word in the definition, but to provide a buffer between the crops and the water body um, during these extreme, you know, stormwater events that we're seeing, uh, especially in 2024. Uh, and when you see these events, again, you can have stormwater running through your fields and running off uh, into surface waters. And when it runs off, it carries away your fertility, your topsoil through sediments, and then also nutrients and, and any sort of other inputs that you've put on for the crops are instead um, being you know, misplaced in a sense and moved to surface waters, not where you want them, and um, also not or desirable for the surface water ecosystem and the, some of the aquatic species that are living in these surface waters. So that's why we put in these buffer strips. So let's say I want to put in, you know, a buffer strip or something to treat water before it ends up in a surface water that's by my farm. Farms and stream corridors are not all created equal. What are the some things that I'm going to be looking at as somebody who wants to do this when it comes to siting it and designing it? They're all going to be different. How are they? How do they how do they change from site to site? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you have some options, again, in terms of what do you want this buffer strip to do for you and for your property. There are some minimum considerations. Like, for example, you need to have a minimum of 30 feet of buffer between the edge of the field and the waterway or the stream. Um, you can increase that number depending on how large of a treatment area the buffer strip is supposed to treat or if you have slope, right? If there's slope, and the, um, you know, the, the slope where the water's moving down, down the stream and you also wanna kinda do anything to slow down that water, catch the water. So you might wanna increase the width for that reason. Um, other considerations are what to plant in the buffer strip. So you can choose to plant prairie species, but then you have to consider the establishment of a prairie and the management of a prairie. You can also choose to plant um, species that you may want to use for hay um, to use for silage. Uh, you also could plant woody species. And if you plant woody species, they can provide shade. And some folks, if you wanted to do like the advanced class here, uh, you, could prov you could actually do it in two stages. So you could plant a, a you know, series of grasses or prairies and then plant some woody species um, after that. So there, there's definitely a lot of nuance to how this could be. I would say start simple if you're just getting into this, uh, and there are lots of great, you know, guidelines out there. So other than starting simple, what other kind of maintenance challenges go into the long-term, you know, maintenance of these practices? Yeah, absolutely. So you'll want to make sure that you're scouting the buffer strip um, and checking for any sources of pests or diseases uh, to your farms. Um, you'll also want to mow depending on the, the types of grasses that you choose to, to kind of uh, make sure that you are maintaining the vegetation itself. Well, thanks, Malika. Yeah. Sorry, there's one more thing. Oh. <laughs> uh, the last thing, I want to make sure you bring this up because it's important. Uh, if you are not mowing regularly or treating the, the vegetation and removing some of the biomass, um, the the buffer strips can actually turn into a net source of nutrients 
and start exporting them into streams. So it's really important to kind of keep an eye on the buffer strip and make sure it doesn't get saturated. Um, and that's why it's really important to kind of be mowing, to maintain it, uh, and to make sure you don't turn your buffer strip into a source. <laughs> it all comes back to management at the end of the day, right? It sure does. Well, thanks, Malika. Thank you so much. And um, for some more resources, again, you can check out the NRCS uh, website. I noticed that a lot of counties across Wisconsin have resources and perks for folks, incentives for folks who want to put these types of buffer strips in. There are also just statewide and national resources for people who want to engage in these types of practices. So if you're going to do this for the first time, you definitely shouldn't be paying for all of it yourself. There's so much support.